Hello everybody in YouTube land, welcome back to the Kazawaki Show. I'm your host, Kazawaki. Um, yeah, just out in a little Sunday morning spin here. And what I'm trying to do in, in this particular recording is just to kind of record an intro for the, uh, the spill video that I'm... Uh, trying to edit at the moment and it's proven quite difficult because uh, the videos are actually recorded in slightly different uh, recording format so this whole thing might come to nothing in the end but uh, as worth a try anyway uh, so the rationale behind it is I'm trying to record I'm trying to, I'm trying to look at the, the, the crash that I had now don't get excited it's not a big massive bits of bikes strewn all over the motorway kind of a crash um, more of a folly down kind of a crash but um, the idea is basically to look at it look at the video footage in real time so that people get an impression of, of what it was like for me driving up to that road coming into that series of bends as I saw it you know in real time then to go back and look at the footage in slow motion to uh, to examine it more closely and to be look at it with a, a kind of a critical eye you know what what decisions did I make coming into that bend that led to it what kind of you know important points did I miss in terms of observation, were there any? Uh, highlight some of the difficulties of that stretch of road that contributed to the crash, you know, in terms of road surface, uh, camber, things like that. And basically, kind of, not assign blame. You know, the purpose of the video is not to say, uh, I crashed because this road was shit, or I crashed because such and such obstacle was there, and it shouldn't have been. And similarly, it's not to assign blame to me as wholly saying just uh, this is all my fault, I'm going too fast, or this is my fault, I didn't have enough skill to deal with this these set of conditions. Anyway, yeah, the purpose is not to assign blame. The purpose is to look at it, examine it with a critical eye, learn from it, and inform future riding. So, that's, that's essentially what we're doing. So I'm going to... I'm going to be looking at it in, you're going to see the video in, in real time then you'll see it in, in slow motion where I'll have little pop little annotations highlighting things that I should have seen and what that would have told me about the upcoming series of bends um, highlighting some of the hazards that were there and then maybe just a little overview at the end you know, summary of my thoughts and the whole thing so anyway, without further ado, here comes the the great spill of April 2018. Uh, first time off the bike. So enjoy! the bike I really do like this bike it's old it is pretty essentially it's the exact same styling as the original bike which was released in 1986 uh, oh and here's my first accident
Okay, so what are the first things we see here? Uh, first thing we notice is that there's a soft margin on the left hand side. Now what does that tell us? It tells us the margins on the side of the road are soft from recent rainfall. It also tells us that there's heavy or large vehicles travelling the road either recently or frequently. Possibly lorries, possibly agricultural machinery like tractors and trailers, things like that. It also tells us that whatever machinery this is, it's it's large enough that it has to pull in for oncoming traffic into the, the margins. And it should have told me that if it's pulling into soft margins and it's softening the muck and compacting the muck on the soft margin, there's a good chance it's going to pull that soft muck out onto the road surface, the tarmac road surface. Next thing I should have noticed was that the broken white line shortly upcoming here you'll see breaks into a continuous white line which gives us a hint that there's upcoming junctions or bends or some reason that the county council feel that overtaking maneuvers in this section of the road are dangerous which is why they've painted a continuous white line now in my defense the continuous white line wasn't painted yesterday or today it's quite worn uh, difficult to see but it's there nonetheless you can also see that the the soft margins are continuing on both sides of the road here now up here you're also going to see if you follow the line of the telegraph poles, here they're on the right hand side of the bike. But once you come to the bend, in the distance there you'll see that they're on the left hand side of the bike. Which means it's indicating that there's a, a sharp left bend coming. Um, and the degree to which they, they change direction should indicate the severity of the upcoming bend. Long before the, uh, the yellow sign indicating a series of upcoming bends. Uh, so I should have seen that from quite a distance back really and that's that's my bad I didn't spot that um, that would have given me forewarning of the, the series the type of bends I was coming I was approaching um, now what else do we notice the soft margins are still evident here on both sides of the road and as we're approaching this we're getting towards the section of the road where the incident occurred now coming up here it's a short notice of upcoming incidents and things like that, which you get very little notice of what's coming. First thing you see is when we come into the series of bends here, the road surface on the left-hand side of my lane deteriorates badly. So naturally enough, I'm trying to keep away from that, keeping out towards the center of the road or the center of the line. Um, but oncoming traffic in this series of bends kind of makes me a little bit nervous to be out towards that close to the center of the line. So I've moved back in a little bit. Maybe that was an error. Maybe I should have stayed further out. Now from here on, um, I'm badly set up for this series of bends. Uh, the following distance from the car in front is, is good, I think. Uh, I'm not too close. I've got good indication or good time to react to things that are happening in front of me. Uh, the bend, obviously, if you notice, the telegraph pole is, is um, switching to the right-hand side of the bike again. So the there's a bend coming to the right hand side um, but I'm, I'm set up pretty much in a, a line to take this bend now and at this point here where you see the muck come out from under the car in front now I'm snookered um, because I have to make a decision now do I go left straight over the muck or to the right if I try to go straight over over the muck I know no idea how the bike is going to react to hitting that muck. It's fresh muck, it's soft, and it's spread quite widely across the middle of the road. It's it's completely covering the line that I'd intended to take. The other thing that you need to watch on, on this in terms of making the right-hand turn is that um, the road surface on the right-hand lane is quite bad on the apex of the bend. You can see there it's quite rough, and there's a danger that oncoming traffic might try to avoid that um, and by avoiding that move closer to the centre of the road, to the white line in the centre of the road. So if I try to go to the inside of the muck, um, am I putting myself too close to oncoming traffic? Um, am I going to be able to get the bike upright and leaned over to the right to make that turn? And if I do, will I then be committed to a line which takes me either too close to the centre line or crossing the centre line in fact because I have no idea what kind of a bend is coming up against against me um, the other option is to uh, to try to get between the muck on the road and the margin on the left hand side of the road 
now this is all done in a split se second decision making so I decided I decided to try to get to the outside of the muck because I wasn't confident that I could get to the inside of the muck and if I didn't I would end up going over the muck with no idea how the bike would react and being set up for right hand turn she may go down and you know low side along the tarmac so I made the decision to try to get outside the muck and get back in unfortunately you know I didn't like the I didn't have the skills enough to get on the outside of that muck and get back in um, also I ran afoul of that soft mucky margin because once I went outside that muck on the road I was able to hold it to a certain degree until the wheel caught the soft margin. After that it was just a case of trying to steady the bike, stabilise the bike, slow it down enough and not do too much damage. Right, okay, so there you go, that's the big skid. I hope you enjoyed watching it and had a good old giggle at my expense. Uh, like I said, the main rationale for this is, is, I mean, the easiest thing in the world to do would have been to get back on the bike right away, pretend it never happened and let on I was a great lad that never crashed a bike or never dropped it or anything like, you know. Um, the reason for doing this was twofold. I think as bikers, biking is a dangerous thing. And the onus is on bikers to look after themselves. And every time you go out on a bike, there's there's a possibility that someone else is going to do something stupid, and it's going to cost you. You know, we don't have the luxury. I mean, people driving jeeps and cars can make mistakes. They have the luxury to have airbags and protection around them. Um, we don't have that luxury. As bikers, we need to preempt all that shit and try and minimise the risk and avoid the danger. And an awful lot of that comes down to observation, trying to predict what's going to happen, trying to look at the clues that are coming up in front of us, like the line of the road in the distance indicated by the poles or trees, or you know, trying to second guess what could come around this next bend. Um, and my, my view is always, my, my, the way I always look at it is, you, you should drive to meet yourself. And by that I mean, if you're happy to drive at 100 miles an hour around this bend, for example, that's fine. As long as you're prepared to accept the risk that if you meet a guy coming 100 miles an hour against you, in a car. You know, that's, that's the mindset you have to have as a bike. You know, you have to, you have to take the defensive mindset. And no one gets it perfect. No one is perfect every single time. Anyone who puts their leg over a bike will come around a bend at some point perfectly confident in the approach that they've taken. And there'll be something on the other side to surprise you. You know, that's, that's just a fact. And it's a fact as bikers that we have to live with. So, all we can do is try to minimise the risk. And part of minimising the risk is accepting that we're not perfect and accepting that we make mistakes and recognizing that you know i dropped the bike i came around a bend i was probably going a bit too fast i wasn't going too fast if everything was perfect but i was going too fast to deal with a, a lump of muck pulled out on the road by a tractor now in my assessment of the whole crash itself I don't know who was at fault. I mean, there was a lot going on against me. But at the end of the day, you know, maybe my skills weren't up to controlling it. Maybe my observation wasn't up to predicting it. And maybe you could take the view that it was just a fucking perfect storm of bad road surface, bad bends, you know, and some farmer pulling muck out onto the road. You know, but that's a kind of cop out. You know, I still have to take a responsibility for the fact that I dropped the bike. You know, I came in, I wasn't prepared for muck. And like I say, 
you accept that and you accept the risk that that's going to happen sometimes but as long as you come away from it from learning something as long as you can get back up on the bike right away shaking and giving yourself a nice fright and say to yourself yeah look I need to be more aware of things like that I need to ride a little bit more defensively and chalk it down to experience and carry on so anyway that was it uh, like I say the rationale for looking back at the video was to examine that you don't when you do it when you have a spill like that you don't sit up in the bike and go okay let's assess that you get back up in the bike and you think holy shit I hope I haven't fucking wrecked the bike and Jesus that was lucky and I'm gonna drive at 30 miles an hour all the way home until I gather myself and compose myself and it's it's one of the benefits of having something like the GoPro or the Drift or whatever you're using yourself that you can go back and you can look at it and if it's someone else's fault yeah you've got the evidence whoop de do. you know if a cage pulls out in front of you or someone not paying attention and texting while they're driving you know you have the comfort of saying yes my bike is wrecked but I can prove it was their fault or you know my legs are broken or whatever but I can prove it wasn't my fault but far more important I think is the benefit of being able to say you know yeah I had an incident I'm gonna sit down I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna see where did I go wrong what could I have done differently and learn from that mistake so I hope you've enjoyed the video um, I hope if, if you've learned anything from it in terms of reading the road ahead or anything fantastic I would presume to be teach I wouldn't presume to, for anybody to be learning anything from that video that they didn't already know but if there's somebody out there new into bikes or you know if you learn something new about watching telegraph poles or the lines of the tree to indicate bends ahead you know then job done you know happy days uh, if you knew it all already I take my hat off to you fair play to you um, but let me know what you think you know in the comments down below you know leave a comment I'd love to hear your thoughts on it you know is there something actually that I haven't spotted that you spotted you know feel free to come back and, and let me know like that you know this was another indicator that you missed or you know anything, anything like um, so yeah we leave it there so uh it's long a fall ride safe and i will see you in the next one